Hi, I'm Adam Pease, and welcome to another edition of Ontology Talk. Today I want to talk about argument types in Sumo. So Sumo uses a typed logic. So unlike just regular first-order logic, which uh, is, does not restrict the types of arguments, Sumo is more like a type programming language if you're approaching this from the standpoint of uh, a, a computer programmer working in a language like C++ or Java. This should be very familiar to you. So if we have a relationship like part, one thing is part physically a part of another, uh, we can say, say, wheel number 23 is part of car 57. I put these numbers on the identifiers just to make it really clear that these are particular individuals. A particular wheel is part of a particular car. Um, and we know that's allowed in Sumo uh, because uh, we have a relation part, uh, and this relation is itself an instance of the class of all relations. So that means that uh, it belongs as the uh, first argument, if you will, in an expression, it belongs in the relation position. The zeroth argument would be another way to say it. Um, and it has two arguments, uh, which are individuals, instances of the class object. So a wheel, a particular wheel is an object, and a car, a particular car is also an object. Now, if we look at the class hierarchy for the class wheel, so you can go into the Sigma knowledge engineering environment and take a look and get a, uh, a graph of the hierarchy. You know, you can see that wheel is a subclass of artifact, which in turn is a subclass of object. Uh, that's the most important thing here because uh, the part is defined as having a uh, requirement that both of its arguments are instances of a class object, and then so on. Uh, object is also a physical, and physical is a subclass of entity, the class of all things in Sumo. So if we just uh, look in uh, the Sigma knowledge engineering environment, the stuff highlighted at red, uh, you can see where I'm showing a page from the browser at sigma.ontologyportal.org, uh, you can see that the domain uh, of the part relation, both the first argument, argument one, and second argument uh, are both objects. So let's look at a, a couple of more examples. So there's other ways to define the types of arguments. In fact, there are four ways that I'm going to show you. So the most common is using this domain statement. Um, and so we just saw how part, uh, the two arguments, the first and the second argument of part, can be defined uh, as an object. Um, and uh, just as an example of this particular sort of expression, or an example of the use of this sort of thing, we have the rule that uh, if two things overlap spatially, then there's a, some third thing that is a part uh, of both objects. So that hopefully should make sense. Two things overlap. There's some kind of middle, if you think of it as a Venn diagram, um, where that middle thing is part of both objects. Um, and, and it's the same, right? That's the overlap. Um, so in this particular axiom, uh, you can see that part has uh, two arguments, and they're arguments that must be of the same or a subsidiary type of overlap spatially. So just an example of how this is uh, actually used uh, in practice. Now, there's also the relationship uh, domain subclass. This is the way we define the types of arguments when those arguments are classes and not instances. So for something like saying that uh, a brake shoe is a typical part of a drum brake. So it needn't be a part of all drum brakes. So you can go to the junkyard and you can get a brake drum system um, and maybe the shoes have been removed and sold off to somebody else because the shoes are in good shape and the drum isn't. Although probably that's not the case. It's usually the opposite if you're a, a, a car enthusiast. But anyway, um, this is a necessary uh, thing if we want to be able to have relations that can be between classes. We need to distinguish between the cases where uh, the arguments are instances or classes. Um, and for typical park, we typical part, we want to make a very general statement. Say that usually, typically, um, a, a brake shoe is part of a brake drum or drum brake. Okay. Range is another sort of 
declaring statement uh, that we use when we're talking about functions. So functions have a return type, if you will, um, and that's the range. So functions have a, a unique L, uh, uh, value for the range for every uh, value in, in the domain. Uh, that's the definition of function, distinguishes it from the notion of a relation. And so we're not talking about the arguments, but rather the return type, the, the, the value of what the, R of the function denotes in the world. Because remember from a previous uh, introductory video, functions denote terms, whereas sta statements involving a relation are sentences that have a truth value. They're either true or false. But for a function, it, ha it denotes a term. So for example, off to the right, we can see that uh, the U.S. State Department is a uh, sub-organization, and forgive the space typo, a sub-organization of the government of the United States. So Government Fund United States is a function with an argument that stands for a term, which we just haven't reified or, or created and named in the system, uh, that is the government of the United States rather than the United States itself. Right. And so here on the left, we're saying that the range, the, the return type, or the thing that is denoted by this function uh, is an instance of a government. Right? In this case, for the statement on the right, it's the instance of the United States government. And in the same way that we have for domain and domain subclass, we have range and range subclass. So if we want to talk about the return type or the denotation of a function, uh, being a class, then we use the relationship range subclass. So we can say that the range subclass of covering function is a wearable item. And uh, in the case of a, a glove, right, a glove is uh, the covering function of the hand, right? So the class of things uh, that is clothing that covers your hand, that's known as a glove. So this isn't used all that often, but when you need it, it's very powerful and it's important to have it. It's part of representing our world. So we have these four th ways in which we can define the argument types and the return types of uh, relations and then respectively functions. So if you're trying to use a relation or a function, uh, it's essential to know what the argument types are. Just as if you were writing some Java or C++ code and you were calling a, a method or a function uh, in that language, it would be essential to know the types of the arguments to that method or function. If you get the types wrong, it may not even compile, much less run correctly. Uh, so you've got to know these things. And over time, for the common ones, you'll memorize them. But initially, you probably have to look them up. And so that's what you use the Sigma browser for. And just as a reminder, I covered a little bit of this uh, in one of my previous videos, but keep also distinct uh, between the notions of sentences, terms, terms, and operators. So even more fundamental than argument types are this sort of these disjoint classes of things. Um, if you uh, have a logical operator like and or or, um, the arguments to uh, and are sentences with the truth, things that have a truth value. And so here you can see likes Bob Sue as an argument to the and logical operator. And uh, likes uh, Bob Sue has a truth value. Either Bob likes Sue or he doesn't like Sue. But that's the only value that actually applies there. It's true or false. Um, and contrast this with the relation part. It's not a logical operator. Uh, and it takes terms uh, as its arguments, not sentences that have a truth value. Uh, wheel uh, 23 is, uh, uh, denotes uh, something in the, in the world, as does car 67. Now, there is sort of a, uh, maybe a confusing exception uh, one, until you're used to it, that if we also have uh, the ability to state things in higher order logic. So if you're used to or if you've studied in school uh, predicate calculus or first order logic, then you know that in those logics, uh, the arguments uh, to anything uh, other than logical operators must be terms. Uh, 
Uh, they can't be sentences with a truth value. But in sumo, we allow higher order, higher order logic. Now, there's a much smaller set of theorem provers that can actually do computation with that. For the most part, um, we've been using the E and vampire provers, which are primarily first order provers. Um, so they have this restriction, but uh, we've still uh, kept track of and spent time stating things in sumo that are higher order on the belief that over time, higher order provers are going to become more common and more powerful. Indeed, that has been the case in recent years. So, uh, for example, Satellax uh, and Leo3 are some pretty hot uh, higher order provers that we do use, and, and they work quite well. Um, so this was a, a good idea to capture information that's in higher order. Okay, so if you forgive that digression as to why we do things this way, uh, then uh, look at uh, this particular example. Let me just scroll the screen so you can see all of that. And uh, here's an example of a very commonly used higher order relation called holds during. And note that the second argument to holds during is a formula. So that's how we specify uh, that we've uh, one of the arguments is a sentence with the truth value. So in this case we say that uh, if uh, it's true that a person possesses an object and that there's something that's a part of that object, then during that same time period the person possesses that subsidiary part of the object. Okay, so um, if I own a car, I own the wheels of that car too. At least we'd hope so. Um, so this is something to pay attention to, right? The only cases when you can have a sentence with a truth value that is an argument to a relation uh, is a case in which we've defined that the domain of that relation, or at least one of the arguments uh, to that relation, is a formula. So that's why you see unambiguously that this is called out, defined, and allowed, okay? Now here's a, just a couple of cases of things you can't do, hence the large red cross. So I've seen people try to do stuff like this. Uh, now uh, this is the sort of thing that you might see in other AI formalisms, maybe that are a bit more uh, casual, that don't actually use uh, a theorem prover, but really maybe have their own kind of ad hoc reasoning system. Um, but it's been, it was pretty common, at least decades ago, to have verbs used as relationships. Uh, and I have another whole video on Davidsonian semantics. Uh, I think I called it case rules. as uh, another word for it on why that's not a great idea and why uh, uh, case rules are a better formalism for talking about actions. Uh, so in the case of sumo, this is not allowed. Right? In sumo, walking is a class uh, of, of actions. It's a class of uh, ambulating acts. Um, and it's not an instance of relation. You can't put it in that first argument. It's not a relationship. Uh, it's the class of all walkings. And so here is a look at the hierarchy. So you can see that walking is down the bottom. Ultimately, it's a process. Well, ultimately, it's an entity. But in particular, it's a process. Uh, we say that we define this by saying you know, walking is an ambulating. Elsewhere, we define that ambulating is a translocation, an emotion, a process, etc. Okay, and this is defined in the merge.kif file that's uh, in the GitHub repository. In case you're curious about where to look for it, so here's an example of how you're supposed to do this and how you can conform to the type requirements that are already in Sumo. Uh, again, since we use this Davidsonian semantics approach, we define an instance of walking and we say that the agent of the walking is John and the destination is John's local grocery. This gives you a lot more specificity and a lot more extensibility uh, for the things that you say about actions. Right? So the upshot of this is, you know, again, understand the types. Uh, walking is not a relation, therefore it can't be used as if it were a relation. Instances are also not classes. Um, so if you say something like part wheel car, well, uh, you know, wheel is a class. Right? It's the class of all wheels. Now you can see this from the uh, hierarchy on the right-hand side. And we know that uh, part doesn't take classes because we use the domain statements. Again, remember the difference between domain and domain subclass. If we wanted to say that a class was allowed as an argument, we'd use domain subclass. But instead, we use domain. 
which means that in this case, the instances, uh, the, the arguments to part must be instances of the class object, both for the first and the second argument. They can't be classes, not allowed. That'll give you a type violation. Um, and just to highlight this, uh, because it's tempting, I think, for people to be kind of free uh, in this sort of uh, representation. You might think you could get away with this, um, but you can't. Uh, in the same way that maybe the difference between uh, an untyped language like Lisp and a typed language like C, uh, C++, uh, or Java, um, this is a design choice. I made a design choice to catch some of these potential errors at the time of writing or at the time of compiling, if you will, um, and that that yields a better system. That's, that's our design choice. You might have a different system that uses a different design choice, but this is the choice that Sumo has made, and it's uh, proven to be very helpful in finding errors over the past several decades uh, as people write and add stuff to the system. So it might be tempting to say, well, wheels are part of cars, parts of cars. I can say that in English, but English and every other human natural language is very ambiguous. And so we keep a clear differentiation in Sumo between language and the lexicon or the language understanding system and the formal theory that may be the result of adding some content that was originally processed from informal natural language. Um, but the important thing is not to conflate the two. Uh, you either have an informal system that's ambiguous and can use part as, as a word and use it in something that looks like a logical expression but in fact is something casual and ambiguous where part can be interpreted in different ways. Uh, or you can have a formal system that has a formal calculus, uh, logical calculus associated with it that can do formal computation. Um, and that's just a different thing, right? So understand what a logical theory is versus a sort of casual free representation that's designed to be interpreted either statistically or stochastically or by humans. Uh, sumo is a logical theory. It requires precision. And so meaning is accurately and strictly captured in this logical framework. That's what it's for. Right, so uh, this is a, just a quick overview of types. Uh, let me know what you think. I'd be very eager to hear from you and have your feedback. Uh, check out some of my other videos. Like and subscribe if you found this useful. And uh, also take a look at the software, all, which is all open source that we have online. Thanks for listening.